APC. Uh, so sorry about this, uh, Prince Etta. Uh, you can hear me now, I take it? Yeah, yeah, I can. I can. Okay. Okay, Very so. Clear. I, I, okay, excellent. So I wanted to move forward. You've just sort of given us, um, you've just given us your, your view on um, sort of a, a post-mortem on the presidential election. So I was going to follow that up, uh, even though you yeah. have more to say. We've actually been thankful that uh, Labour Party's uh, Peter Obi was in the race. Uh, as you know, he came third. You know, yes. and, um, but, but I wanted to ask you, um, what, do you, what do you think of the situation that we have on our hands where you know those pre-election polls, uh, all of them got it wrong. The only thing that they got yes. right about all those polls uh, was that one of them, it wasn't even all of them, one of them had made the projection that it was going to be a three-horse race. So that's the only aspect that one of them got right. Uh, but all the others were calling, calling it for you know, other people. So uh, seeing as these polls have to be, they're sort of scientific. They're known as scientific because um, when you talk about scientific, they're statistically uh, uh, based. Uh, what do you think? What, what do you think went wrong when all of the polls, nobody, nobody really got it apart from the one that said that uh, it was going to be a three-horse race? Um, my perspective to um, the polls that we had pre the uh, presidential election is, um, is that Polls is a new feature of the Nigerian political process, you know, and um, I believe that it has not been contextualized, that it has not been particularized to the conditions and the situations of Nigeria. I think they are using the, the same uh, parameters, the same variables that they deploy in the Western uh, democracies to do polls in Nigeria. That is about one of the reasons uh, that I think that they are completely they are completely off the mark. I, I, the second one is that we paid for. I, I will take an example. Thank you. Uh, take an example of the ANAP polls. We know the owners of ANAP, and we know their political persuasion or their electoral persuasion in these uh, 2023 elections. So. Uh, there were so many factors that made for uh, the polls that uh, we had in, you know, pre the election to be completely uh, different from the electoral preference of the Nigerian people. I, I, I believe that there must be a scientific way of gauging the political temperature of the country and uh, the electoral preferences of our people. But until it is particularized, until it is contextualized, until the, the, the things that make us who we are, the, the Nigerian factor, so to speak, are taken into consideration in the formulation of the variables to, uh, for, for polls to actually be, be um, relevant in our, in our situation. Um, uh, having said so, I, I would like to say that um, Nigerian politicians have always uh, uh, loved a strategy of uh, giving the impression of their strength even when they do not have. Uh, it has been so, we have done so in several ways. Uh, most times you see people hire a lot of uh, people in rallies so that the other opponent will think that they are uh, essentially on ground. Uh, this is one of the things that uh, the Nigerian, uh, the, some of the uh, contestants deployed to, uh, to uh, distract the other contestants. Uh, that's my perspective. But I mm. think that I have had an opportunity to be on television to say that these polls, putting them together, creates a situation where people have unrealistic expectations and the concomitant um, consequences of such um, unrealistic expectations is that people become emotional and in some cases allow their emotions to, to, to um, propel them into regrettable actions. 
I, I am happy that this um, scenario uh, has not uh, uh, come to pass in Nigeria. I am happy that those who feel that they, they should have won based on the polls are taking the constitutional means of, of redress uh, rather than taking to um, a replication of what the answers did in, in Lagos and other parts. And I must say that amounts of responsibility being one of the victims indeed you know and um in in, in that regard uh, a lot of people are happy as you've just said that look there's a prescribed route should you have any issues and you can uh, actually avail yourself uh of of that route and um just take it to its logical conclusion but in the midst of all of that INEC mm. has had to uh, make the announcement that, you know what, guys, talking to political parties, um, INEC was set up to regulate and supervise political parties and not the other way around. Uh, this, of course, came about uh, because of um, demands to see INEC's uh, records, database, and INEC said that is not going to happen. Um, do you think there's a sense like uh, being understanding and saying, look, let's just make this thing work. A winner has been declared. That doesn't mean that there's no more to be said about it. If people are speaking, okay, let's, let's give them the, entire, uh, the entirety of their rights to pursue it. Uh, but then you begin to, uh, perhaps in INEC's uh, view, overdo it so much so that INEC has to now say that you're not going to come and be, you know, breathing down our necks and looking over our shoulders and uh, looking into all sorts of sensitive records. Uh, give me your, what, what do you think of that? Einig just made that announcement last, last night, I, think, I believe. Well, so, somebody, somebody, likened, somebody likened it to students wanting to see how um, the lecturers are setting up the exams for them. Um, well, for me, I, I think that the Labour Party would that. Um, the Electoral Act provides for two two sets of uh, results. The one that is uploaded on the on the portal of the uh, or the IREF, and the one that you have as a hard copy. And this is why when people questioned the Labour Party, when they were they were given the opportunity of of listing their agents in the one hundred and seventy six thousand two hundred and twenty five pulling units in Nigeria, they came short by about 40, 40 or 43,000 or there about uh, 1,000 uh, agents. Because if they had all of these agents in place, and they would have had their soft, uh, their hard copy, which will allow them to go to court if they have any concerns. Good for us that the INEC has all the results. I think about 97% of the results from uh, all over Nigeria is on the portal of the INEC now. What they should do is to go to the uh, to the portal and compare with the results that they have on 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 paper. Now you cannot say you cannot allow every Tom, Dick, and Harry, no matter the level of participation in the process, to go to INEC and know how the server, how the IRM, and how the beavers are all configured. It will give you uh, uh, an advantage that you do not, you do not have uh, 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 in the laws of the land. No political party has that kind of advantage, advantage, advantage as enshrined in the constitution of the country or the electoral act that uh, regulates the, 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 the election. And so I think on this matter, uh, I know it is on, on a higher ground. And I think that the, uh, uh, the political parties must avail themselves with those reliefs that are protected in the Constitution and the Electoral Act. Um, so that, that's my perspective on it. Yeah, thank you. So, you know, uh, it's, that is not going to happen. Uh, INEC is not going to open its vaults uh, to a political party, as you just said, just because somebody feels that that might be a good idea. You have to think about it all. But you were making, earlier you were speaking about uh, some of the aspects of the uh, just concluded election 
uh, after, the after the event, uh, patterns being discerned, and you had said there's this unfortunate pattern of ethnicity and uh, religion. Um, well, I've heard people religion, say that. Yes. Yes. I've heard people say that, you know, you can't um, really remove that from our party. It doesn't matter which party it is. Uh, although there are those who are saying that, well, uh, Labour Party has come along and has done it uh, the way it hasn't been done before, allegedly. Um, of course, Labour Party will disagree. Uh, people, would, they will say it's just about, um, it's just about uh, competency. And it just so happens that there's also this coincidence that where this competency is coming from uh, happens to be, you know, the area that uh, they prefer. Uh, but this surely is, is a problem. No, that is, uh, I, I, I will disagree. I will disagree with the people. I will disagree with the people who hold that opinion. You are aware that the Labour Party presidential candidate, unfortunately, was using the pulpits of the church or the church. Uh, when I say the church, I'm, I'm talking about Christendom was using the pulpit of the church to to ask and in fact in a, a particular um, a particular instance he had asked the church to take back the country uh, that was that was a little too much and and um, the showing of the presidential candidate of the labor party cannot be divorced from the court uh, from the church uh, I, I, I do know that a lot of people uh, have had to vote for the presidential candidate of the party because their pastors asked them to. And, and you can see the rhetorics of the pastors even after the elections, uh, the results of the elections have been announced. So you yes. see, um, for Asiwaju Bola Metinibu to have come, uh, to, to have come tops in the election, it means that a, a, a large percentage of Nigerians are speaking truth to the pastors and telling them to steer away from our political lives. They should rather be concentrating on our spiritual lives. And again, on the other hand, you remember that uh, uh, Waziri Adamawa, the, the presidential candidate of the PDP, had gone to Kaduna to ask the people of the North not to vote for a Yoruba or an Igbo man. You remember? So he, he proceeded from that uh, premise of wanting only uh, the people of the North to vote for him. But you see, if you look at the results of the election, Asiwajubola Abetidibu won more in the North than even Atiku Abubaka. Indeed. Um, one, one moment, so, one moment, so please, it, Prince. It I beg your pardon for interrupting that, you, Prince. I've got to bring yes. on Reverend Dominic. I, I'm so sorry. I've got to bring on Reverend Dominic, who has been waiting for uh, a while. Uh, good morning, Reverend Dominic, and thank you for holding on. Well, thank you, Chief Yore. Chief Yore, I, I don't know if you are guest will hear me. He has spoken well. Okay. Can you he hear me? Uh, Prince Etta, can you hear the phone caller? Yes, I can. I can. I can. Okay, great. Please continue, okay. Reverend Dominic. Okay, you're, you will bear me witness. To me, this election has been won and lost. If you can hear me, this election has we been can won hear. and lost. Yes, but Yori, I want to ask your guest. Just like I have an argument in my office after service yesterday, in our pastor church, the captains of the industry in it, and every everybody. You know, support who you want to support. I'm a preacher, so I don't. But there's an argument in my office yesterday. I want to ask your guest why is it that after this election, there's a cry and a hue all over, my, all over the world? I read the uh, Times of United Kingdom. The Chatham House has been against for many years that people go there to talk, even that people are still, they are still our masters. Chatham House put on their own report. All of the, the, the international observers in Nigeria, the local observers in Nigeria, put their own reports. And every of these reports were saying that IMEX did not do what they're supposed to do, that this election is flawed. To me, you know, my, my meaning, political lady, it's lost and won. But it doesn't have international credibility. It doesn't have local credibility. And there's a reason I saw yesterday, or, or Yuri, I saw the song from Katina yesterday. yesterday. We are... Mr. President voted. The result in 2019 
was the same result exactly in 2023. I may be wrong or right. That is by the side. And most of us who believe that this election is won and lost, see how fear because of Oshu Tribunal. You know what is Oshu Tribunal? He knew. Oshu Tribunal gave us a misfeeling that these beavers could be neither here or there. And today, INEC is still releasing results of presidential results in their beavers, in the IRF, 97%. What if it goes like Oshu? issue. That's my question. Why is it, it doesn't have this understanding of uh, acceptance worldwide? Are we locally that this election is well managed? Why? Can you answer me that? Thank you. Okay, Reverend Dominic. Um, uh, okay. Uh, Prince uh, yes. Let me, let me first of all, let me first of all thank him for this question because it is important that these questions are answered. For me, I believe that um, Almost every observer is hinging its report on the uh, lack of INEC uploading results on the IREF. If you hear from the European Union observers, they will tell you, oh, this is what INEC asked them, that they were going to re release the results online, um, on, uh, uh, online uh, through the IREF. This is the same thing that the Chatham House is saying. Almost everybody across the spectrum are yes. saying the same thing that INEC that had promised to upload results um, on the IREF refused to do so. Now, my brother, there are two things that I want to say here now. In the law of Nigeria, in the law guiding the operations of that election, the transmission of election was only discretionary the discretion to choose whether to upload the results on the IRF or not to do so was simply the responsibility of the chairman of INEC. I know that the INEC chairman has not confirmed this, but they found that about between 25th of February and 26th of February, about 197 attempts were made to hack the IRF of the INEC. And if you put me in the shoes of Professor Yakubu, I would do the same thing if I am not sure that the server that is in the INEC cannot be hacked. If I am sure that it cannot be hacked, then I will go on and transmit the results electronically. But if I know that it is possible for the election to the results to be hacked, I will do exactly as he did. Now, okay. the second one is that for every result that was to be uploaded on the IRF, there was a hard copy given to all the agents of the especially the three major political parties. So if the if the uh, European Union, the Americans, everybody is saying that uh, there was a deficit in terms of the credibility of the election, I beg to differ. And I would like to say here now that I have not heard anywhere in Nigeria that where the European nations are conducting their elections, that we send observer, uh, observer teams to go and uh, uh, tell them whether they ha it had met the international standards or not. Exactly. At this stage, very, Prince, very I want careful. to bring in Joshua, so, so who is that, holding on, having called in from Ire Walidi. Good morning, Mr. Joshua. Oh, oh, good morning, no, me. I, this is miracle. Thank you. <laughs> I've been calling you. Congratulations, Uncle Yori. Uh, yes. Congratulations, congratulations, Nigeria. Congratulations to Nigeria. Yes. Uh, Nigeria made it out of the woods. We escaped from darkness. I I want uh, the pastor to understand that there was a media conspiracy against Nigeria to pull down this country. You're talking about Whether pastor. Uh, you're, you're talking about Reverend Dominic. Yes, Reverend okay. Dominic. You okay. understand. Okay. So he should not be carried away from uh, whether an international observer or local observer or whatever it is. We saw the build up before the election and after. There is a conspiracy to pull down Nigeria. 
Because if Nigeria gets it right, Africa will be okay. And the international community, I don't know what their issue is, but they are <laughs> actually not looking for a third force from Africa, which Nigeria is likely going to be. I congratulate the Muslim Muslim ticket is an affirmation to him that Nigeria has grown beyond uh, ethno-religious sentiment. We are at a level where we want a nation. The president-elect should take up that challenge so that these pastors... See, Uncle Yori, I'm a Christian, right? The way pastors want to rule Nigeria, I don't know what their issue is. I certainly <laughs> don't know. What, they are, what is it that you will incite your members? Mm. After telling them to vote for a candidate, they decided to do what they want to do. They have voted for a president-elect. You will still go to your pulpit and use unprintable words. It's unthinkable how these pastors talk to militarize, to weaponize their members against their nation. If Nigeria falls, will this it's not because Nigeria is prosperous that they have mega churches. They should stop heating up the polity and destroying Nigeria. We don't want religion. Okay. They should know. All we right, don't yeah. want religion. Whoever these pastors are, they should go back to their members and be content with collecting tithes and offering. The president-elect should do something to make sure we take religion and ethnicity out of our public discussion. All right, then. Well, thank you very much uh, for calling in, Mr. Uh, Joshua Niri in, in, in Ire Walide. And uh, uh, Prince Etta, following on that thought, um, yeah, his observation is accurate because even as we are speaking, there's still a, well, you see, social media is what it is. There's freedom to be on social media and say what you want on social media. But it's uh, a, a bit worrying the way some are using it because just as Mr. Joshua has said, Till this morning before I came on, you still have, you know, men of the cloth. Clearly in their domain, in their house of worship, and they're still saying things that contradict what has been accomplished and what has been announced. Um, uh, it's worrying. People are still coming up. And you know our people, Nigerians do prophets. Nigerians do prophecy. Nigerians do religion. And so somebody will now say, this is what God showed me. We've finished the election. Whatever God showed you, the election has been finished. We've made an <laughs> announcement. They still are saying that what God showed them that time, you just wait. It is going to come to pass. And it's contradictory to what we have on the ground. Give me your thoughts on that. Uh, well, uh, let me start by saying that I'm a pastor's son. <laughs> and, um, okay. And, uh, <laughs> and I know the Bible. Uh, what they are doing is completely outside of the Bible. Uh, I remember when Jesus Christ went to the temple and saw people uh, doing all manner of things. He brought out a whip and whipped them. I believe that if Jesus Christ were to come back to the Nigerian church today, he would not use a whip. He would use AK-47 to deal with them. So um, on that basis, I want to say that... Um, the, the, the church has no business in being another political party or a religious wing of a political party. Uh, in 2015, the church attempted this and it did not work. Mm -hmm. In 2019, the church again attempted this and it did not work. And it has not worked in 2023. Albert Einstein says that, of course, you know what he says about madness, that if you keep doing the same thing, <laughs> over and over again, and you get the same result. It is, it yeah. is a definition of madness. Yeah. You get. Okay, I beg so your pardon. The, I, I got the, to. The, because, uh, you know, uh, Maru Chuku. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, my brother on the, on the sky. Yes. Sir, you see, when. Before this uh, presidential election, Punch newspaper carried that story. That Tinubu has won the election, the Gabon. That was either three weeks or before two weeks. I was telling people, say, look, if it's an outside Nigeria, foreign country, where a newspaper of high magnitude carries a story like that, people should conclude that that is the result. 
For people who were asking, say, how can you analyze, analyze the man? They are what went to newspaper say three weeks before that election, later manifested. Now, everybody can go to court. You agree. That is the normal way of being said. But the question is that we are in a system that manship. That is what is affecting Nigerian political arena. The sportsmanship is not there in the politics. So if Nigerian politicians will learn that spirit of sportsmanship, that you go to match, any football match, you must be a winner, they must be a winner. If we start abandoning that sector, even the governorship election coming up uh, on the, uh, at least the level of which it can have, they think that Nigerian people should try as much as possible. Have that sportsmanship that by that they think, if you win, accept in goofy, you didn't win. Don't go and start looking for people that to cause confusion and commotion. Indeed. And that is why I should say, friend, if you have decided within yourself by what of day, it is to go and vote for it. Go there and vote for the candidate of your choice. And that's what I said. What will you do? You have seen that some states, they have serious problems. No payment of salaries and pensions. Make sure that such political parties don't come back to this. Or such, if the government is still existing, that it should not come back. You look for new hands so that there will be a change. We cannot continue, continue, continue of just every day which we make money. Look, we have to move forward. That's why I should tell our young boys and young girls. You are good in the internet. You, 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 you want to have a kid. That is. Indeed. Well, thank, thank you very much uh, for calling in on that. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I like the point you made about um, the Muslim Muslim ticket and, you know, in spite of how some people felt about it, it has actually it actually has its usefulness in what it has proved now, uh, because nobody's going to say that uh, you know it is yes. only Muslims that voted for Ashwaju. But please, uh, your your concluding thoughts, uh, uh, Prince uh, Hilliard Etta, on this uh, sort of post mortem. Of well, the, uh, uh, my my concluding thought again is to congratulate Ashwaju Bola. <laughs> uh, my thought is to come, first of all again congratulate him and his uh, vice president elect. Uh, in my interaction with him and in my, um, in my stay as a, a, a party officer from 2014, I am yet to meet another Nigerian who has had the many arrows and darts thrown his way politically that has survived what Asiwa Jumbala Metimino has survived. You know, if you know what we, some of us know in the party, the attempt the concerted conspiracy to take Asiwaju out of the equation started mm -hmm. immediately we won the presidential election in 2015. And Asiwaju owes us a debt of writing a memoir so that all of us will know the many nights of long. Even I, member of the NWC that was listening suffered a collateral damage, damage in the way of the conspiracy trying to take Asiwaju out of the system, they now um, took all, all, all of us out of the system. Until today, nobody has had the, 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 good, the goodness and the kindness of heart in the party to, to apologize to the members of that NWC. I want to use this opportunity to thank Nigerians, to thank our APC Northern Governors, to thank Governor Wiki, to thank members of the APC, to thank Mr. Peter Obi, because in fact, he's coming into the, into the fray, um, helped us to uh, completely uh, wipe out the, the PDP in South South and the Southeast. And that helped us in the election. So we want to thank him Indeed. for doing so. And um, <laughs> for doing so. The Turaki uh, Adamawa I had also thank, said, before the Turaki Adamawa, uh, Atiku Abubakar yes. of the PDP had also said that there's no way Peter Obi could have expected to win this election. Well, that's, that's between them. That's between the two losers. No, there you know, is but, no way he could have won the election. There is no way. Yes. He did not have a national appeal. His appeal okay. was just in the south and in swath of the Christian communities in the north central. Well, we so he, he did not there. have the, the votes that is needed to win the election. Yes, thank you very much for having me on the thank program. You. Indeed, really appreciate you, Prince Hilliard Etta, former acting chairman of the uh, ruling APC. And that's our program today.